Ephesians chapter 2 Our part in the household of God, his temple 2 colon 1 10 God's grace to the Gentiles and the body of Christ. 2 colon 11 18 The Gentiles' condition in time past, but now, and ages to come. 2 colon 19 22 The household of God, his kingdom of heaven and earth. 2 colon 1 And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, Two wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, three among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Romans told us that we are saved by grace, but Ephesians tells us why. The key to this chapter is to pay attention to the pronouns you and ye change to we and us. Why does Paul begin this chapter with and? Christ is seated in the heavenly places, 120, and we are seated with him, 2 colon 6, because you, Ephesians and the faithful in Christ Jesus, hath he quickened, spiritually alive with his spirit, who were dead, spiritually dead, in trespasses and sins. Paul will explain our lost position in time past individually and corporately, but now God is giving the Gentiles another chance. The Father has made believers spiritually alive and accepted in Christ. Salvation is a miracle. When we believe the gospel of Christ, the Father works the miracle of translating a sinner out of Adam into a saint in Christ. Rom. 1 16, 1 Cor. 118, Colossians 2 verse 13, Phil. 3 10, by the exceeding greatness of his power, he hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, Colossians 1 verses 13 and 14. Paul reminds the Ephesians, and us, that in time past, before the Ephesians believed the gospel of their salvation, they were spiritually dead and walked according to the course of this world. This world has a big flowing current that is sweeping mankind along the Broadway to eternal destruction. This is according to the prince of the power of the air, Satan, who is also called the god of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, 2 Cor. For colon 3, 4, is orchestrating or conducting this vanity fair in this world. Satan's evil spirit is working in the children of disobedience who refuse to believe that Christ died for their sins. There are really only two ways of thinking, God's way or our own, which is Satan's way. Satan controls much of what is on television, radio, the internet, and the wisdom of this world in politics, education, and religion. The world is on the fast track toward a false one-world government and a false one-world religion under Antichrist after our rapture. We all, Paul now talks about all of us believers in the body of Christ including himself, were among the children of disobedience and had our conversation, manner of life, in times past in the lusts of our flesh, we did what our flesh or sin nature wanted, just like everyone else. We were ruled by our fleshly appetites, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, what our sin nature wanted to do, if it felt good we did it, and of the mind, we didn't deny ourselves anything that our wicked minds could think of. We were born sinners because we inherited Adam's sin nature. Rom. 5 12 14, and then added to that our own sins. We were doing and thinking evil, vile, ungodly thoughts and did wicked things. Satan's battle is for our minds. We were by nature children of wrath, we were naturally full of wrath and did the things mentioned in Romans 1 verses 18 to 32 and we deserved God's wrath because we were against God. No one needs to teach a child to misbehave, it comes naturally. This is why God told Eve in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, Genesis 3 verse 16, because she knew she was giving birth to a sinner that would live in a sin-cursed world because she and Adam had disobeyed, Genesis 3 verse 17, Gal. 1 colon 4. We were spiritually separated from God like Adam. We were part of Adam's family just like all lost people. We were in bondage to Satan and sin. The fact that most men and women are blind to Satan's power over them makes it even scarier. Satan opposes everything God is doing. He doesn't want anyone to be saved or to come to the knowledge of the truth. 1 Tim. 2 colon 4. Satan wants churches to teach false doctrine, he has corrupted modern Bibles, and is keeping mankind so busy, entertained, and distracted, they never have time read, study, or listen to the Bible rightly divided, 2 Tim. 2.15 Satan knows that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, Rom. 10.17 
He tries to keep people from hearing Christ's instruction to the body of Christ through Paul in Romans to Philemon. Almost everything going on in the world today is designed to keep you from studying the word of God rightly divided. There are many distractions. Satan has convinced many to chase the mighty dollar, which keeps them so busy that they are not thinking about eternal rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. 1 Tim 6.10 We were dead in our trespasses and sins. A trespass is what Adam did. He stepped over God's boundary. Originally Adam had union and communion with God, but Adam died spiritually the very moment he disobeyed God. He broke the one rule God gave him, not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Genesis 2 verse 7. Spiritual death is separation from God, while physical death is the separation of the soul and spirit from the body. The spirit of the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience was replaced by the spirit of his son into your hearts, Gal. 4 colon 6. Sin means to miss the mark. To miss the mark is to fall short of keeping God's perfect standard, His commandments. If we sin, miss the mark, we go to hell forever. Adam and Eve were innocent, but not righteous. But God provided a way of redemption and righteousness. This is what the gospel of grace in Acts 20 verse 24 is all about. When on earth our Lord Jesus said, He, the devil, was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. John 8 verse 44. Satan lied and told Eve, Ye shall surely not die. Genesis 3 verse 4. But they did die spiritually and eventually physically also. After they disobeyed, they were imperfect and could not save themselves. All Adam's descendants were powerless in their flesh to keep God's commandments and helpless to save themselves out of their hopeless condition. We were in great spiritual danger and without help we would die in our trespasses and sins and go to hell. But Paul explained in Romans 5 that we gained so much more in Christ than we lost in Adam. We gained Christ's gift of righteousness, Rom. 5.17. For but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, five even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved winky face. Six and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, seven that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, God didn't abandon us in our helpless, hopeless condition, but was merciful to us in the body of Christ, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ and sees us spiritually identified with his son's death for our sins, burial, and resurrection, wrong. 6 colon 3, 4. By grace, the Father has raised us up together with Christ and made us sit together with Christ in his heavenly places. The Father exalted His Son far above all principalities to sit in the position of honor at the Father's right hand, 120, 6, and has raised us up to sit together with Him in the exalted place in heavenly places. Some very excellent grace pastors teach that Christ ascended far above after Paul was saved in Acts 9, and this may be true so that in the ages to come he might display the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. God took hopeless, helpless sinners, made out of dirt, and put his Son's Spirit in them and gave them glorified bodies and eternal life by his love. He never forced us to believe, but gave us freedom of choice. God gave all his creatures the freedom to choose to live for him and with him, or not. Every person has the opportunity to call upon the Lord and be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Rom. 10.13 For us who have believed on Christ, God has set us free, so we love Him and want to serve Him as His obedient, loyal, faithful, respectful, and orderly subjects for all eternity. God intervened in mankind's history and although we were spiritually dead, it was God's grace to send His Son to die in our place so we could receive His Son's life. Rom. 5.10. God spared Abraham's son Isaac. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, 
thine only son from me, Genesis 22 verses 11 and 12. But God did not spare his own son, Rom. 832, God demonstrated his love toward us on Calvary. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Rom. 5 colon 8. God made a way to save us when there seemed to be no way. God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation, 2 Cor. 519. The Father saw the world through the loving eyes of his Son who sacrificed himself for mankind, and he was satisfied and appeased. The Father is reconciled to the world, but a sinner needs to be reconciled to the Father through faith in what his Son has done. Jesus Christ is the only mediator between God, the Father, and mankind. For there is one God, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all, to be testified in due time, 1 Tim 2 colon 5, 6. The Son made friendship between Father God and man possible. The Father is holding out his hand in friendship, but we must do our part, believe the good news, and shake his hand. We must be careful to follow God's simple instructions to us for salvation. We are saved when we believe how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4. When we believe we receive Christ's righteousness, no matter who we are or what we have done, even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, Rom. 3.22 The gospel of Christ is the power of God to quicken the spiritually dead to become spiritually alive to God, Rom. 1.16 The unbeliever is spiritually dead and separated from God's spirit, but Christ's spirit joins with the believer's spirit when they hear and believe the gospel. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit, one core. 617, at that moment we are instantly spiritually quickened or regenerated, Titus 3 verse 5. It was purely by the exceeding riches of his grace, unmerited favor, and his kindness toward us that God decided to form the body of Christ to live in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In the ages to come we will know more about the Father's grace and kindness toward us in the body of Christ. Our condition was that we were dead in sins, but we were quickened together with Christ. His life gave the dead spirits of a new group of people, life. We are made spiritually alive in Christ, and we are spiritually raised up and seated with Him. Our position is to be seated in heaven, but practically we are here on earth, but our position will be a physical reality at the rapture. God already sees the body of Christ members seated with Christ in heaven because God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, wrong. 4.17 The powers of darkness cannot overthrow God's divine purpose, take his Holy Spirit from us, or remove us from being a part of his body, or rob us of our inheritance in heaven because we are safe in him. Notice the plural ages, this means ages and ages to come or eternity. God will show or put us on display as a trophy of the exceeding riches of his grace to save us. His kindness toward us in the body of Christ through Christ Jesus will be revealed to the angelic host and kingdom on earth believers and us in eternity future. God took some dead dirt bags, put his son's spirit and life in them, gave them glorified bodies, and caught them up to heaven to serve him with hearts full of love and gratitude, just because they believed. What will we be doing in the ages to come? At first, we may join the good angels, who had been staying in the third heaven, to clean up the mess left behind by the bad angels after they are kicked out in the middle of the tribulation, ISA. 34 colon 5, Revelation 12 verses 7 to 9, dot. 8 for by grace are ye, the Ephesians and faithful in Christ Jesus, saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, nine not of works, lest any man should boast. 10 for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. It is by God's grace that he has come up with the solution to man's sin problem for his son to pay for our sins with his own blood. He redeemed us and gave us the forgiveness of sins and the gift of his son's Holy Spirit of promise mentioned in 1 colon 7, 13, and 14. Our salvation was a free gift of God that none of us deserved, the gift of his son's righteousness, Rom. 5.17 the salvation of everyone in the body of Christ was by grace through faith. Through faith, our faith in what Christ did by his faith on Calvary, Gal. 2.16, Paul said, and that not of yourselves. 
since it was not our work, but Christ's work that saved us, we only believed, no one can boast that they contributed to their salvation in any way. Because we did not do any work to save ourselves, Jesus paid it all, no one can boast. We all deserve to burn in hell forever. Salvation is not anything we did or contributed to. Salvation is 100% God and 0% man. This gift of salvation is by God's grace. We just believe and receive his righteousness, 2 Cor. 521, if we add any of our work to our salvation, then we insult God and make our salvation of none effect, Rom. 4 colon 5, 14. Faith is not a work. Faith is something we can do without working because it is just trusting or believing. Salvation is not something we do, but something Jesus Christ has done and we put our trust in him, not ourselves. Faith alone, in Christ alone, by grace alone. Our salvation was purely the work of Christ, it was not of ourselves, we did not earn it, we only believed so no one on earth or in heaven can boast. Sadly, so many people are trying to earn what has already been paid for. For we, the body of Christ, are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, a new creature in him, unto good works, of service to God, which God before ordained that we should walk in them. With Christ's Spirit in us, we can understand God's Word rightly divided and grow spiritually in wisdom and have an intelligent understanding of what God said He is doing, has done, and will do. We can know God's plan, how we fit into it, and how we will serve Him. The question is always for what saith the Scripture? Rom. For colon 3, we want to know what God said, not human stinking thinking, for what God thinks is divine. God has saved the body of Christ for the purpose of serving and having fellowship with him in the heavenly places. Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Son of Man, the unique God-man, the Savior of the world. God worked to save us by faith, and then he works in us through his word to sanctify us by faith. God created a new group, the body of Christ in Christ Jesus. We are dead to the power of sin because we identified with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection so we can walk in newness of life, Rom. 6 colon 3, 4, 14, call 2 colon 9 dash 15. The body of Christ is God's workmanship, Phil. 1 colon 6, 2 13, Colossians 1 verse 10. A sculptor chips away everything that is not part of the finished masterpiece. God is equipping the body of Christ to do good works. God keeps us and works in us. It is the power of Christ that works in us. 320. The Father wants us to know Him and His Son more. Jesus prayed, and this is life eternal, that they might know Thee the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom Thou hast sent. John 17 verse 3. We only become fully useful sons when we understand His plan, purpose, and will in his word rightly divided, this is how we know what God is doing. So Paul who told us to rightly divide the word of truth, will now show us how God divides his word into past, present, and future in the next half of this chapter. 11 Wherefore remember, that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, 12 That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world, Paul reminds the Ephesians that they were born as Gentiles. That ye in time past, before Paul was saved in Acts 9, they were called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. The men of Israel were physically circumcised in the flesh by hands as God commanded his nation to do through Abraham, Genesis 17 verses 10 to 14. In time past, the circumcision, Jews, looked down on by the uncircumcision, Gentiles. David said, For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, Goliath, that he should defy the armies of the living God? 1 Sam 1726. At that time ye, Gentiles, were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. The Gentiles were foreigners, aliens, from the commonwealth of Israel, and did not have anything in common with Israel, no share, or part in the rights and privileges of citizenship in Israel, and their national wealth in God. The Gentiles were aliens because they did not wish to retain God in their knowledge. Rom. 128. In time past, God made a distinction between his chosen nation that he made from Abraham and all other nations, Gentiles. God gave the Gentiles up at the Tower of Babel, Genesis 11 verse 9, Rom. 
1 colon 18 32 for they were making a name for themselves and not worshiping god with the hope of saving them later through israel god made his own nation out of abraham and gave the israelites the physical difference of circumcision in the flesh of their foreskin genesis 17 verse 10 then through moses god gave them dietary laws special holy feast days and other laws that further separated them from all other nations in prophecy the Jews, circumcision, were above the Gentiles, uncircumcision. The circumcision was nigh to God and had his favor. What nation is there so great, who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? Deuteronomy 4 7 Israel was wealthy because they had God as their God, his word, and his favor. All the covenants of God belonged to Israel, Rom. 9 4 and none to the Gentiles. We were strangers to God's promises to Israel. Paul said, Jesus Christ was a minister to the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3, 26 colon 2-5, 28 colon 13, 14, Rom. 15 colon 8. The body of Christ did not exist in time past. The Gentiles in the flesh were in a pitiful, hopeless condition. 13. But now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. But now in Christ Jesus ye, Gentiles, who sometimes were far off are made nigh, near, by the blood of Christ. 1 colon 7. But now marks the dispensational shift God has made from the past to the present that began in Act 9 when Jesus Christ has saved Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus. God has now begun a new dispensation and the Gentiles have another chance to believe God. Now, the Gentiles can believe directly on Christ without going through Israel and become saved members of the body of Christ. God is no longer making a distinction between the circumcised and the uncircumcised in this dispensation. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all, and in all, Colossians 3 verse 11. The mystery of the formation of the body of Christ and the dispensation of grace has been revealed by Christ through Paul. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest, revealed, to his saints, Colossians 1 verse 26. Dot. 14 For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, 15 Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, 16 And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, 17 And came and preached peace to you, Gentiles, which were afar off, and to them that were nigh, Israelites. 18 For through him, Christ, we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. For he, Jesus Christ, is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, Paul was born a Jew. For Jesus Christ is our peace, who has made both Jews and Gentiles one in the body of Christ, and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, the laws that separated the Jews from the Gentiles. Having abolished, eliminated, in his flesh, in Christ's body, the enmity, the hostility between the circumcised Jews and the uncircumcised Gentiles, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, all the ordinances that made Israel special from the Gentiles, for to make in himself of twain, the two, Jews and Gentiles, one new man, the body of Christ a new creature or creation to live in heaven, so making peace, between saved Jews and Gentiles, and that he might reconcile, to return, back to union, to restore to friendship those who were alienated, to settle the quarrel, both unto God in one body by the cross, so both the Jews and Gentiles in one body or group, can be friends with God by the cross, having slain, put to death, the enmity, animosity between the believers in the body of Christ and God, thereby, it was by the cross after Paul's salvation in Acts 9, not at the cross, and came and preached peace to you, Gentiles, which were afar off, and to them that were nigh, the Jews including Paul. For through him, Christ, we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father, through Jesus Christ both Jews and Gentiles have access unto the Father by one Spirit, the promised Spirit of his Son. There was hostility between Jews and Gentiles in the past. But now there is peace between Jews and Gentiles who have believed Paul's gospel. 
Saved Jews, circumcised, and saved Gentiles, uncircumcised, are no longer enemies, but one new man without distinction, Gal. 327 28. God is preaching peace to Gentiles and Jews and asking them to believe the gospel of Christ so they can have eternal life in heaven. The Jews in the body of Christ no longer call the Gentiles uncircumcised because God considers the Jews as uncircumcised. Ye stiff-necked, Jews who will not turn to God and believe him, and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye, Acts 7 verse 51. The unbelieving Jews have fallen down to the same level as the Gentiles, so now they can be saved into our group during this dispensation. The laws and ordinances that made Israel special is the middle wall of partition. These laws made a separation or middle wall of partition between Jews and Gentiles, but in this dispensation, Christ abolished the enmity or hostility between Jews and Gentiles and his flesh and the wall has been broken down. The ordinances that made Israel physically different from the Gentiles have been nailed to the cross, Deuteronomy 6,4, 7,6 blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Colossians 2 verse 14. God has made of the two believing Jews and Gentiles one new man and made peace between us in Christ. The nation of Israel fell in Acts 7 as Paul explained in Rom. 11 11, 12, 15. Israel stumbled at the cross and fell with the stoning of Stephen, Acts 7, when they committed the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, Matt, 12:31, 32. So now that the Jews have fallen to the same level as the Gentiles, they are not considered a nation today. Therefore, God can have mercy on both individual Jews and individual Gentiles, Rom, 11:31, 32. What Christ has done on the cross is so grand that physical circumcision does not matter in the body of Christ, only faith that works by love matters, Gal. 5 colon 6. Our circumcision is spiritual, Colossians 2 verses 9 to 15. God also wanted a spiritual as well as physical circumcision for Israel, Rom. 2 28, 29. In the dispensation of grace there is no distinction of any kind in the body of Christ, none based on ethnic birth, racial, gender, or social status. We are all one in Christ, Gal 3.28. We are reconciled into one group, or body, of believers by the cross, not at the cross, because the body of Christ did not begin until Paul was saved in Acts 9. Because all that Christ accomplished by the cross for the body of Christ was not revealed until Christ revealed it to Paul after the cross, beginning in Acts 9. God kept the body of Christ a secret from Satan, 1 Cor. 2 6 8. Furthermore, although the clock of Daniel's timeline for Israel stopped on Palm Sunday, God gave Israel a one year extension of mercy because Christ asked for it and for the Father to forgive them, Luke 13 verses 6 to 9, Luke 23 verse 34. God's secret explains this in detail on page 46. We are not under the law, but under grace, Rom. 614, but his spirit in us would never lead us break the holy ten commandments, Gal. 518, 1 Tim. 1 colon 9. Paul mentions 9 of the 10 commandments in his letters to us, Rom. 13 colon 8 dash 10 f. 6 colon 2, except Sabbath keeping which is for Israel. Those believers will have their rest in the millennial kingdom. If God is operating on a 7,000 year plan, then the rapture will happen soon, since it has nearly been 6,000 years since Adam and Eve were created. Let us therefore do all we can to take as many as we can with us, and help as many as possible to have rewards for God's glory at the JSOC. Our books can help. You can read them on your own or use thee as a resource to teach others. First read God's secret to get the big picture overview of what God says in the Bible in a 100 pages. Then read through the study guides, all under 100 pages, or commentaries begin with Romans and going in the order of the books of the Bible then read Acts and finally Hebrews. Reading the books before and after Paul's writings is very important and helpful, then read the rest of the Bible. The Father gave the nation of Israel a bonus year to repent and believe that Jesus was their Messiah through Peter and the little flock. Finally, the religious leaders of Israel committed the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, Matt. 
12.31-32 by stoning the Holy Ghost filled Stephen in Acts 7 and the nation fell. But, the little flock continued accepting new converts until Acts 15-Gal 2 when they learned that Christ had begun a new ministry from heaven through Paul to a new group of believers, the body of Christ. After the rapture, God will give the Israel another chance to believe and make a nation out of the believing remnant who endure until the end of Daniel's timeline when Israel gets her kingdom, Matt. 2400 hours 13. After Christ's second coming at the end of the tribulation, they will rule with him in his kingdom, ISA. 2 colon 1 4. The clock of the last seven years of Daniel's timeline of 490 years will resume after Antichrist signs a seven-year covenant with Israel to allow the unbelieving Jews to offer animal sacrifice in the temple. But, this does not happen until after the body of Christ is raptured. 2 Thess. 2 colon 7. There is peace between us, Jews and Gentiles, in the body of Christ. Saved Jews and saved Gentiles are no longer enemies. There is no longer preferential treatment of the Jews or anyone else based on birth. There is no respect of person with God. What matters is, are we in his son or not? Are we with or without Christ? It is all about what Christ has done. Through Christ, we both, individual saved Jews, not the nation, and individual saved Gentiles, have access by one spirit to the Father. Believers are not closed off from the Father. Members of the body of Christ have access to the Father by one spirit, Rom. 5 colon 1, 2, F. 3 12, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit, one core. 12 13, 19 now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. In this section, Paul now returns to writing about the mystery of his, the Father's, will, 1 9, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, 1 10. Now therefore ye, Gentiles, are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Now that Paul has been saved, God is giving the Gentiles who were put aside at the Tower of Babel the opportunity to be saved and have eternal life with God apart from going through Israel. By believing the gospel, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4, anyone can be saved into the body of Christ. Gentiles are no longer strangers, but fellow citizens with the saints, Peter's group, and of the household of God. Saints are those who are set apart because of their faith in what God says to them. Peter's group was sanctified before Paul's group and set apart by having Christ's Spirit in them, Acts 2 verses 36 to 38, Acts 26 verse 18. The glorified Lord Jesus Christ told Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus that we would have an inheritance among them, Peter's group, which are sanctified by faith that is in me, Acts 26 verse 18. All believers in heaven and earth in the household of God are saints. There were saints before the body of Christ, there are saints in the body of Christ, and there will be saints after the body of Christ. We are built on the apostles and prophets in mystery, and Peter's group of those in prophecy. Paul revealed the mystery to Peter, James, and John, and the apostles in prophecy understood the mystery by the Spirit. No one knew that the household of God was a duplex until Paul. The entire blueprint for the body of Christ's side was not made known until Paul. The Bible is laid out, prophecy, Genesis to Acts 9, mystery, Romans to Philemon, and then prophecy, Hebrews to Revelation. Acts is a book of transition, from Christ's ministry to Israel on earth, to Christ's ministry to the body of Christ from heaven. After our rapture, Hebrews to Revelation, prophecy, will help more of Peter's group to go through the tribulation and into the kingdom on earth. In the past, the only way to be saved was to believe in Israel's God and bless Israel, Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3. In the future, after our rapture, the Gentiles must bless the believing remnant the little flock, Luke 12 verse 32, of Israel, more of Peter's group. 20 and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, the believers in the household of God are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Jesus Christ is the foundation according to the revelation of the mystery, and the foundation according to prophecy. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ, 1 Cor. 3 11. 
both Peter and Paul call Jesus Christ the chief cornerstone. Jesus Christ is the rock to build that messianic church on. Jesus said, upon this rock, Peter's confession of faith, will I build my church, Matt, giving the Gentiles who were put aside, 1618, behold, I lay in shown a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded, 1 Peter 2 verse 6. Christ is the one cornerstone for both heaven and earth. The cornerstone is the perfect piece of the building that the rest of the building depends on. The chief cornerstone can be thought of as the cross. Both groups of people are redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that he shed on the cross. F. 1 colon 7, 1 Peter 1 verses 18 to 21. Each side has apostles and prophets as their foundation on top of the foundation of Christ. Israel had the twelve apostles, the body of Christ has one apostle that came before the prophets. The body of Christ had a few additional temporary apostles during the Acts period such as Barnabas, Acts 14 verse 14, and Timothy and Silas, 1 Thess. 2 colon 6, Israel had many prophets over a period of 2,000 years, while the body of Christ only had them during the Acts period. Prophets in the body of Christ were temporarily supernaturally empowered by God to help the body of Christ in its infancy to know what Paul said, 1 Cor. 13 colon 8-13. Unfortunately, some of the Corinthian church members became more impressed by their sign gifts than with Christ's ministry through Paul. Paul is now in Rome on house arrest writing down the mystery that Christ has revealed to him in this letter. 21 In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom, Christ, all the building, the household of God, both believers in heaven and earth, Paul's and Peter's group, fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. Peter and Paul's group have the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ our Lord, 1 Cor. 1 colon 9 but only Paul's group has the fellowship of the mystery, 3 colon 9. Right now the body of Christ's side is growing, but after our rapture, the kingdom on earth will resume growing again. Our side is growing now in number and spiritual knowledge of the truth, 1 Tim. 2, 4. Peter said to Israel, ye, the little flock, Luke 12 verse 32, also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2 verse 5. Paul said, Every part mocketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. For 16. Dot. 22 In whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. In whom ye, the body of Christ, also are builded together for an habitation of God, place for God to live, through the Spirit. Paul began the chapter saying that before their conversion the Gentiles were inhabited by Satan's spirit and were children of disobedience, but ends the chapter with the body of Christ also being a habitation for God, ISA. 45 colon 18. The Holy Spirit reveals the truth of God's word rightly divided so we can understand the mystery of his will, 1 colon 9, which is his kingdom, 1 10, the kingdom of Christ and of God, 5 colon 5, the household of God, 2 colon 9, the holy temple of the Lord, 2 21, art the whole family in heaven and earth, 3 15. In the next chapter Paul will focus on the mystery of the body of Christ, his heavenly people, the kingdom of God, Israel, God's rule of Israel, his earthly people and the nations as king, the church, the body of Christ, God's rule of his heavenly people, as Lord and head, God's rule over all in heaven and earth. It is wonderful to contemplate on all our spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Calvinism error. Calvin thought that faith was the gift a person must receive from God so they could believe. Calvin's conclusion is a false private interpretation that is not supported elsewhere in scripture. For a person has free will and can choose to believe, or not, and does not have to be spiritually quickened and given faith by God. Calvin did not believe in free will or that a person can decide to trust or believe the gospel and instantly be made spiritually alive, quickened with Christ, 1 12, 2 colon 1. The gift in Ephesians 2 verse 8 is salvation, not faith but forgiveness of sins through his blood, 1 colon 7, and the gospel of your salvation and the sealing with the spirit of promise, 1 13, were presented in chapter 1. Christ is raised, resurrected, and ascended and so is the body of Christ, 1 20, 2 colon 6. 
John Calvin wrote extensive volumes of books, but they were fundamentally flawed because he failed to rightly divide. He did not see the body of Christ in the Bible because he did not obey the one verse which tells us how to study the Bible. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Tim. 2.15 Calvin believed in limited atonement. Calvin thought that he was one of the many Jesus mentioned to give his life a ransom for many, Matt. 2028 Calvin failed to believe the text which indicates that the many are Israel. In the Gospels, Christ made to earth to save Israel, his people from their sins, Matt. 121 Jesus said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Matt. 1524. The reason Jesus Christ came to save the Jews was so that they could be a kingdom of priests to evangelize the Gentiles, Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6. They were to be a royal priesthood, 1 Peter 2 verse 9. Gentiles in this dispensation cannot steal the covenants and promises that belong to Israel and apply them to themselves because God is not finished with Israel and he will yet fulfill them, Rom. 11 colon 25 dash 27. Not until Paul does Christ reveal that he was not only a ransom for Israel, but was a ransom for all, 1 Tim. 2 colon 6. The body of Christ and the dispensation of grace both began at the same time when Paul believed on the road to Damascus, Acts 9 verse 6. We are currently living in this dispensation which will end at the rapture, which was also a mystery given to Paul, 1 Cor. 1551, 52, 1 Thess. 4 colon 15-17, Titus 2 verse 13. Paul related his testimony to King Agrippa saying that Jesus Christ appeared to him and told him to go to the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, Acts 26 verses 17 and 18. Also, Calvin did not understand that Romans chapters 9 to 11 are about election for service, not salvation. Gentiles are saved apart from going through Israel, by their fall salvation has come to the Gentiles, Rom. 11 colon 11 dash 13, 17, 25. John Calvin failed to divide the Bible where God divides it, between prophecy and mystery. Sadly, Calvin did not understand the distinctive ministry the Lord Jesus Christ gave to his apostle Paul, and he mixed salvation and election, Peter and Paul, law and grace. Once you learn rightly dividing the word of truth, Calvinism, Arminianism, and 30 plus denominations do a huge face. Splat! Z on the deck. As the scriptures fall into their proper place. Arminianism. Total depravity. F. 2 colon 1. Conditional election. Rom. 829. Universal redemption. John 3 verses 14 to 18. Free will slash grace can be resisted, Acts 7 verse 51, possibility of losing salvation, Revelation 2 verse 10, possibility of falling, from grace, Gal, 5 colon 4, Calvinism, total depravity and, inability, F, 2 colon 8, 9, unconditional or, sovereign election, John 15 verse 16, limited atonement, Matt, 2028, Irresistible grace. John 6 verses 37 and 44. Perseverance of the saint. Rom. 1129. Pauline Bible believer. Dead in sins. Ephesians 2 verse 5. Paul's group elect for. Service. And so is Peter's. Acts 26 verse 18. Rom. 924. Apostasy is departing from following Paul to follow Christ. 1 Cor. 11 colon 1. Unlimited atonement. 1 Timothy 2 verse 6. Free will slash grace can be resisted. Romans 3 verse 24. Gal. 221. Eternal security for Jesus is in us. Rom. 510. 21. Possibility to be useless slash dead to God. 1 Tim. 5 colon 6. I know I'm seated in heavenly places. By Jimmy Pittman, used by permission. God satisfied with the work of my Savior. He shed his life's blood on Calvary. When I believed him, he saved me completely, and now I'm longing my Savior to see. Chorus. I know I'm seated in heavenly places. All spiritual blessings were given to me. I'm an ambassador for Jesus, my Savior.
to show a lost world that they can be free. The Father blessed me with spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ the Lord. In Christ he chose me before the foundation. Now I'm without blame before in love. God had a mystery, he rightly divided. The dispensation of grace revealed. We live yet know us, but Christ liveth in us, and by his Spirit eternally sealed. There is one body, one hope of your calling. There is one Lord, and one faith too. One God and Father, above all, and through all. One faith, one Spirit, in me and in you.